Through the centuries, London has inspired great writers, great painters, great statesmen, and great criminals. But in the year 1896, the greatest criminal of them all suddenly came into being. His identity was unknown, he never left a clue. And all London waited breathlessly as he struck again and again with sheer audacity and terrifying brilliance. Absolutely fantastic. Huh? Well, first the gold seal from Edinburgh Castle, and then naval secrets from the Admiralty, and now Queen Elizabeth's jewels. What in thunder is Scotland Yard doing? I don't know. Well, it makes chills run up and down my spine. There's no clue to any of the thefts. <laughs> you must have some ideas on this case. Huh? What are you doing, anyway? Research. Research? Holmes, do you realize this gang has been helping themselves to state secrets and national treasures? Have they really? Oh. oh, hello, Inspector. Come on in. Good morning, Dr. Watson. Is Holmes in? Yes, he is, but our communication seems to be faulty. Oh, there you are, Holmes. Oh, good morning, Lestrade. You're up early. Well, you'd be up early, too, if every government official in London were breathing down the back of your neck. <laughs> yes, I must say, that would make uh, sleep rather difficult, wouldn't it? Holmes, I'll come straight to the point. I need your help. Uh, indeed? It's these extraordinary thefts. Government stuff, you know. This man and his gang have evaded every trap we've set for them, and the Commissioner's demanding results. I gather that you're... Uh position is somewhat precarious and you wish to secure it, eh? Well, all right, Holmes. You can put it that way if you wish. Well, Lestrade, you know there's only one thing for you to do. To regain the confidence of your superiors, you must go out and capture this criminal yourself. I, uh, I... Well, uh... Well... Goodbye, Mr. Holmes. Goodbye, Lestrade. Good luck. If I can be of any assistance, please don't hesitate to ask me. Thank you very much, Dr. Watson. Good day. Good day. How could you do that to him? He did everything but beg you to help him. Well, it's the Yard's job to solve these cases. Besides, I'm always giving him help. I should have thought if you wouldn't do it for the strayed. At least you'd remember the security of England's being menaced by this criminal. Now, look, I know you're pressed, Holmes, but, but you don't seem to realize the... That's a special blend of tobacco, Watson. You wouldn't like it. I'm sorry, Watson. I didn't mean to upset you. Oh, no, not at all. You just startled me. Sorry. Really. I'm uh, just going out for a walk in the, in the fresh air. Oh, yes, well, goodbye, Watson. Enjoy your walk. Certainly, Holmes's erratic behavior was enough to set my nerves on edge. But now, suddenly, I was far more than upset, for I had seen something in that humidor. At least, I thought I'd seen something. Perhaps it was my imagination my nerves. But I could have sworn that mixed with the tobacco in the humidor was a diamond necklace.
You just going out? Yeah, you just going in? No, no, I, I'm just strolling about. Oh, that's nice. Well, I have an appointment. Oh, I, I, I say, would, would you like me to stroll along with you? Well, as a matter of fact, it's a private matter. I think I'd better go on my own. Oh, right. Well, will, will I see you for lunch? But, uh, most likely, most likely, yes. <laughs> Watson, I said it was a private matter. No, I... Look, I, I, I don't want you to think that I... Do, Holmes, you must... <laughs> no. well, 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 shall I be seeing you at lunch? I believe we've already discussed that. Y yes, we already... Hmm. when Holmes returned, he was kind enough to let the morning affair be forgotten, or apparently forgotten. Thank you, Watson. Um, and I, I hope you won't mind if I take my cup over to the desk. I have a few things to look over. No, of course, my dear chap, do, please. His only reference to it was his remark about another private appointment that afternoon. I felt he gave a bit of undue emphasis on the word private. As for me, as terrible as the morning experience had been, it actually stressed the importance of continuing my investigation. One other thing was also made quite clear. I realized that if one were to match wits with Sherlock Holmes, one could not employ ordinary methods. station, please. I'm sorry, sir, this cab's engaged. That's all right, I'll double your fee. I'm sorry, sir, this cab is not available. But, but, Melinda and I, we're eloping. We don't have time to, uh... I'm very sorry, young man. I'll triple your fee. For the third and last time, young man, will you kindly go and elope with somebody else? Nobody understands us. Not your father or my mother, nor this, this cabbie. Come, Melinda, we will fight the world together. But we will prove our love. Number eight hundred and sixty. What in heaven's name are you doing up here? This, sir, is where the cabbie usually sits. No. Really, Watson? I'm sorry, sir. I think you've made a mistake, sir. My name isn't... It's Sedgley, sir. Oh. Well, Sedgley, uh, may I give you a word of advice? The uh, corners of your beard are in dire need of repair. Most extraordinary behavior. 
Ah, here comes the legitimate carriage. Cabby! Cabby! Well, uh, good day, essentially. It's nothing serious. Now, Miss Ames. Yes, Mr. Holmes? I want you to take 15 paces to the right and 10 to the left. You must all remember that the first requisite of being a good thief is capable planning. As the newspapers have said, we are the most successful thieves England has ever known. <laughs> Now, we return to the case of the neurotic detective. Mm. Repressed hostilities against society. I don't think Holmes will allow any probing. Not willingly, anyway. If only you could meet him ostensibly on a non-professional basis. If I could say you were a friend of mine. Excellent suggestion. Now, why don't you come to dinner? I, I could say we were friends from my student days. Uh, what are you having for dinner? Oh, well, uh, never mind. Uh, yes, I should be delighted. Right then, fine. I'll expect you at 7 o'clock at my flat, which is 221B Baker Street. I should be prompt. I hope something can be done. Oh, Mr. Holmes, this problem is really a very simple one. With skilled fingers, I shall mould him as one does a piece of clay. Good night. Good night. <laughs> The uh, inner workings of the mind, Professor. Fascinating. Mm. It is amazing how many seemingly normal people are mentally disturbed. Now, take yourself, Mr. Holmes, as a purely hypothetical example. I imagine you might dream that the whole of London fails you. On the contrary, I, I sleep most soundly. Ah. Then there are all the little nervous habits, the idiosyncrasies. Uh, for instance, do you drum your fingers on the table? Do you ever pull the lobe of your left ear? Now, you know, it's interesting that you mention those things, Professor, because I've observed that you have three half-smoked cigars in your coat pocket, that your shoes have lifts in them to give you greater height, and that your fingernails are bitten down to the quick. Of course, uh, hypothetically speaking, I suppose you're what one would call an erratic man. Observe the three half-smoked cigars. You're also a very vain man. Observe the lifts in your shoes. And more than that, you're a very, very insecure man. Observe the fingernails. I, I, I also observe that you've mangled three pieces of bread and that you've hacked your roast beef with a more than culinary vengeance. Offhand, and without prejudice, mark you, I'd say that you're suffering from some very deeply repressed hostilities against society. Yes, very deeply repressed indeed. Professor, where are you going? You must excuse me. Extraordinary friends you have, Watson. Yes, indeed. I 
say he's completely disappeared. Oh, yes, just as well. Anyway, I'm going to go out myself in a few minutes. Oh, really? A private matter? Oh, didn't I tell you, Watson? I've been invited to a reception in honor of the new Turkish ambassador. At the embassy? No, no. As a matter of fact, my dear fellow, it's at the House of our uh, Minister for Foreign Affairs. Oh. Ah, uh, good evening, Dr. Watson. Is Holmes in? I want to ask him a few questions. And you came to straight on the one man I wanted to see. Now sit down, will you? Sit down. What's the matter? Shh. Now, Lestrade, I want you to promise me that what I'm going to tell you, you won't reveal till your dying day. The mood the commission is in, that may not be very long. I know who London's master thief is. Who? Holmes. How? Holmes! Shh! You're joking. I wish I were. Oh, but Holmes! I don't believe it. I can prove it. But that's not the point. The thing we've got to do is to stop Holmes. Whisk him away and put him in a home somewhere. Yeah, but... Holmes! Oh, hello, well, Lestrade. I didn't know you were here. Oh, I, uh, just happened to be in the neighborhood. Oh, good, good. Watson, I wonder if you could, uh, look, can you uh, fix this confounded thing? He's on popping up at the bank. Oh, hang on. I thought you hated formal affairs. Well, uh, people change in Illustrate. People change. Well, come on, Watson, hurry up. I want just to say, very important to do this, you know? Very important affair. There you are. There you are. Good, thank you. Oh, Illustrate, tell me, how's that big case of yours getting on? Oh, fine. Terrible. We haven't a clue. Oh, I say, flowers. Yes, I'm escorting a rather beautiful young woman tonight. Rather picturesque, don't you think? Well, uh, good evening, gentlemen. Well, enjoy yourself. Good night. Uh, thank you, Watson. Thank you, Lestrade. We knew what he was going to do. Let's look at this as Holmes would have... Well, I, I mean, when he was normal. You know, those formal clothes are very odd. Well, he was invited to a reception of the House of the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Big diplomatic thing. Uh, yes, but ordinarily stay miles away from a thing like that. Therefore, perhaps he has a special reason for going. Hmm. Perhaps. Hmm? Official papers of state. Secret documents. In the minister's safe! Hurry, Watson! He won't slip away this time. Do you know this trade? I've never been so unhappy in my life.
done nothing but sing and dance and talk and have a wonderful time. My feet are killing me. Uh, where does the minister keep you safe? In his study. Well, we better get over there right away and be prepared for anything. I think the danger will increase now that the party's nearly over. Mm, you're right, Watson. Let's go. Ah, Wilkins. I didn't see Mr. Holmes anywhere, sir. And his young lady left in a carriage, all by herself, sir. Ah, no time to lose. Dr. Watson. Yeah? I want you to hide behind this curtain here. And, uh, Wilkins, what's in here? Oh, it's a cupboard. I want you to stay in here and come out when you need it. Right, sir. I'm going to stay in the hall. We'll get Holmes no matter what he does. Right. Fine, Mr. Holmes. Good work, Toby. Now, look, Holmes, you you don't know what you're doing. You're not well. You'll never get away with this, Holmes. I already have. Oh, Toby, would you be good enough to ask the Commissioner to come in here, please? The Commissioner? Of Scotland Yard? Well, naturally. Now, now look, Holmes, I, I'll take you away to France, or, 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 or Switzerland, and Spain. I mean, you, you'll have a nice long rest. Our commissioner. Splendid work, Mr. Holmes. Splendid. Commissioner? You too? What are you talking about, Lestrade? And put your hands down. You're not in any danger. Uh, uh, I, uh, uh, yes. Mr. Holmes, all Bristol knows you a tremendous debt of gratitude for this magnificent service. Service? Dangers? What on earth are you talking about? There have been a great deal of unrest in recent months regarding the adequacy of the measures employed to guard many of our national treasures and government secrets. It was discussed in the various ministries and at the Yard. It was finally decided that we would put ourselves to a test. Mr. Holmes was hired as a most worthy adversary to our security. The results were most enlightening. A far tighter security system has already been planned. Working for Scotland Yard. But Holmes, why didn't you tell me? Because the only true test could be obtained by keeping the utmost secrecy. Every personal reaction had to be genuine. The men from Scotland Yard were told nothing because they too were being tested. It was essential that everyone believe these thefts in order that the tests could be accurate and worthwhile. And the reactions were most amazing at the Yard. And to think, Watson, you didn't trust me. Oh, I say, look here, Holmes. No, no, Holmes, really, you've got to listen to me, please. I, I, I mean, get my point of view. I mean, for, for, for all I, I knew, the whole British Empire was at stake. Well, yes, yes, you have a point there. <laughs> <laughs> Come along, Sedgley. Oh, really, Holmes? <laughs> Sedgley? <laughs> 